Hi, my name is Demetri Rogers, and we're going to be talking about how group roles play a part in slow angry men. I'm going to show a video to get you introduced to the subject and so you know what we're talking about here. The same brain came into his mind that opened and shut case. Or is it? Oh, come on, he's, he's not. Now it's up to 12 men to decide the fate of the accused and for one man to stand alone in the ultimate battle for the truth. You want the boy to die for your own personal reason. Courtney P. Vance, Ozzie Davis, George C. Scott, Arden Mueller Stahl, Dorian Harewood, James Gandolfini, Tony Danza, Jack Lemon, Hugh Cronin, Michael T. Williamson, Edward James Almos, William Peterson, directed by William Friedkin. So those are all the characters that played in the movie. And we're going to be talking about how some of those characters play group roles. But first, we got to talk about what group roles are. So to start off, group roles are assignments or functions that people in a team oversee. They are their tasks are just a you know get a task done. And depending on how big or difficult the task is, that determines how many members are within a group role. So the first one we're going to be talking about are blocking roles. This is one category of uh, group roles. It's usually a, t a team member who disrupts the flow of information. Uh, they kind of, most of the times, the audience does not like or prefer the person that's being the aggressive, being the, that fills the blocking role. And then some of the um, blocking roles are the aggressor, blocker, recognition seeker, self confessor, playboy, playgirl, dominator, help seeker. So, one person that I want to talk the first group role that I want to talk about is the aggressor, played by the third juror. Um, he, throughout the movie, was, you know, creating a ruckus, uh, getting people's emotions riled up. He was name-calling and just creating a bad environment for the matter that was being handled. So we're going to see that in this clip right here. Sanctimonious talk about slum kids and injustice. And you make up a lot of wild stories, and all of a sudden you're getting through to some of these little old ladies in here. But you're not getting through to me, guys. I'm not. What is the matter with you people? Every one of you knows he's guilty. He's got burned. So as you can see that he was name calling throughout this clip and also saying that he's got a burn in a juror situation is unprofessional and usually you wouldn't see that, but he used his words like that and then he just he abandoned he does not want to abandon his own ideas and he kind of blocks the you know the flow of new thoughts and new ideas from even happening within the group. The Playboy. He's a little bit different from the aggressor. He's still a blocking role, he still disrupts information, but it's not the same way as the aggressor. He's not a, as aggressive. And he actually just makes snark, like, you know, little jokes and makes a mockery of the situation. So, what we're gonna see in this is him making jokes and people telling him, like, You wanna be down in Atlantic City at the Hair Splitters Convention in baseball, but you're stopping the smart remarks all the time. Oh, my friend, you $15 a day, you gotta listen to everything. As you can see, he makes a joke, and then one of the jurors kind of checks him and says that like we gotta stop with the jokes and just we gotta focus on the facts of the situation. So reflection on the blocking rules. So what you see in the clip of the aggressor is a man yelling and insulting other people, and usually that is seen as something that's like annoying and blocking the information from flowing. What I actually see though is that his character is not all bad. He he offers like a, a burst of energy to the room and keeps everybody like their emotion heightened and just keeps everybody invested in the situation because everybody cares now. Uh, as for the playboy, uh, he kind of counteracts the aggressor. He kind of offers like jokes and a way to like lighten the mood and keep everybody's like emotions calm and people from like stop people from fighting. So main his role serves as a group, uh, the glue of the group. Uh, he's like creating a, a social cohesion. Usually people with this have strong interpersonal skills. And the different types is the different types of major roles are encourager, harmonizer, compromiser, gatekeeper, standard setter, group observer, summarizer, and reality tester. First one I want to talk about is the harmonizer. There's a lot of debate on who the harmonizer is, but I went ahead and just chose the fourth juror. Because throughout the throughout the um, the movie, he kind of stands up, tells everybody to focus on the facts, and we can see that in this clip right here. You pointed out to us, but this isn't Sunday. We don't need a sermon in here. Yeah, I don't see any need for an argument like this. I think we ought to be able to behave like gentlemen if we are going to discuss this case. Or maybe the gentleman who. So he tells everybody to behave like gentlemen, to stop, you know, getting their emotions riled up, to focus on the facts, and make sure that everybody knows why they're in the room for it. 
which is for the murder, is a big upset. He has a level-headed mindset, and he, throughout the movie, never got excited by emotions. So. <coughs> and now, the most important character in my eyes is the reality tester, which is the eighth character. Uh, he challenges the group's initial thoughts, and his goal is to provoke deeper thinking. So even in the beginning of the movie, when he had, when they had voted and he was the first person standing against Eleven, he stood his ground and provoked deeper thinking throughout the whole entire situation until he got one person to change his mind and change to a not guilty vote. And that's how he kind of got the ball, ball rolling. But right here in this clip, you're going to see how he's provoking the minds of the group. We agreed that it takes 10 seconds for an elevated train to pass a given point. If the woman witnessed the stabbing through the last two cars, then we must assume that the body fell just as the train was passing by. Therefore, it was roaring by the old man's window for a full 10 seconds. As you see, he was testing everybody's mind to make sure they're thinking deeper and to get more information out of people. So reflection on the maintenance rules, the harmonizer of the group, I realized kind of just keep things mellow and without this, a lot of fights would have started. There was a lot of, you know, from the aggressor, there was a lot of bad mouthing and people getting their emotions brought up. So he's a very important character. And then the reality tester, as I said before, I feel like he's the most important person in the, the movie. Um, the movie wouldn't even be created or wouldn't go through if he wasn't the first person to say, like to challenge the group rules, the, all the group members. So now I want to talk about task roles. These are roles that refer to people that just want to get the work done. They don't really care. They didn't really like offer much information and they also don't get their emotions brought up. They try to keep everything just set forward or get the, the task done. So this could consist of uh, information seeker, opinion seeker, information giver, opinion giver, collaborator, coordinator, energizer, and procedural uh, technician, and the recorder. They usually have a calm demeanor and the first one I want to talk about that has a very calm demeanor throughout the movie is the first drawer, which is the foreman. He kind of just records people's uh, ideas when they went to go uh, do votes. They had the slips uh, that um, he handed out so everybody could vote, and he kind of read it all. And he just offered as like you know a way to transport everybody's ideas and get them down on paper. You. Not guilty. So in this clip, he took everybody's votes and basically just read them out. And then once it came to a not guilty uh, vote, he uh, sent it to the group, and that's what kind of got the, the ball rolling again, because that was the second person that actually switched their, their vote. He shot away from getting into arguments, and the whole entire time, he just tried to set the group back on track. The information seeker, the left juror, he was one of my favorite characters. He had a quiet and calm demeanor. He listens before anything and he kind of just retains all the information that is give, being given out. With that, he also seeks more information and asks a lot of questions, and this also provokes deeper thinking from the jury, as you see in this clip. Now, my question is this Why did you So as you see in the, the video, he asked a question, and you can see that the foreman is actually in deep thought and actually thinking about what he has said. And but just giving getting him to think, and that's what the what was so important about this jury. So reflections on task roles. So watching the movie made me realize how powerful someone can be without words. The foreman, uh, for example. Uh, he didn't say much, but he kept the group on task. He, he made sure that everybody was keeping a, you know, a calm demeanor without just doing too much. So that's why I say how powerful he was. And one of my favorite characters is the information seeker, because the whole entire time, every time he got up and started talking, he asked a question that actually made me think. And I'm just watching the movie and I kind of know most of the information. And he made me think every time uh, that he asked a question. So I think that's very important in a situation like this because a lot of people in the group were not doing that. A lot of people were actually just going off in motion. We had the man with um, the kooky hat, which was another aggression that I wanted to mention. And with him and the other, the third juror being the aggressor, 
it made a lot of um, problems in the um, the information secret just you know poked at their minds and got the information flowing again. So conclusion: the roles that were that were brought to attention all played a part uh, in the, the decision of the murder. And I just want to point out that group roles are very important when they're working together because without one, it can cause a problem, and with too many, it also could cause a problem. So that's my presentation about 12 Angry Men, and my name is Denise Rogers. Thank you.